Hello, welcome to episode 83 of Knits and Stuff. My name is Alicia and today we'll be talking about finished objects, works in progress, pretty things, fangirling, and local delights. Um, first, welcome to those of you that are new and for those of you that are returning, thanks for coming back. Um, everything we talk about today is going to be in the show notes, either um, at knitsandstuffpodcast.com or if you're watching on YouTube, you can find them down in the description below. Because of some accessibility issues with Ravelry, um, I'm going to be trying to link to things outside of Ravelry where I can, and then those that are Ravelry links will be um, explicitly said that they are, <laughs> um, so just be mindful if uh, you do have issues viewing their new site, um, and if you have any suggestions on other, uh, platforms that offer the same services, I know there are a couple ones coming up, um, now that I've heard of, uh, like Fiber Club and things like that, so, um, always good to have many options, um, for, uh, being able to keep track of all the projects, so, um, anyway, <laughs> so with that, um, let's get started. So finished objects. Um, I think I talked about this one last episode where I was made a bunch of progress on it, but um, I am now done with the Faded Beanie by uh, Savannah Owens. This is out of Madeline Tosh Merino Light in various colorways. Um, my Find Your Fade shawl is out of these colors, and I made a matching beanie. <laughs> um, I knit it on US 2.5 um, 3.0 millimeter needles and US 4 3.5 millimeter needles. Um, I think I talked about last time how this is the first time I've done a rolled hem folded, turned hem, folded hem, whatever you, you want to call it. Um, so uh, it's just basically a double layer of knitting where you fold it over and then you get this kind of thicker hem. Um, I like how it looks on this. Um, and I think I, the pattern, um, they have a pom-pom at the top, so I may or may not get one to add to this. I'm thinking like a dark gray faux fur-ish. Um, one, well, we'll see. <laughs> um, and then, um, when I knit the fade, uh, the shawl that, out of these colors, I did it in the same order, and as you can kind of see, the, um, pink here doesn't really go into the gray as fade-like <laughs> as you would hope. Um, so... I forgot about that when I was knitting the shawl, or when I was knitting the hat, and then um, I think if I were to do this again, I could maybe change the order of the colors, start with the pink down here, and go towards this kind of like lighter grayish, purplish color, um, and then go into the grays, um, or maybe even like skip the grays completely and make some of these sections longer, I don't know. Um, but actually when you wear it, you can't even see <laughs> that, that part, um, that well. And then from the back, it's not really that obvious. I don't know. I was thinking like, oh, should I re-knit this whole thing, um, or knit another one? Uh, because I think I have enough yarn left over to do another one of these. But, um, yeah, after I put it on, I was like, no, I think I like it. It's fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's the hat. Another finished object that is new from last time is um, another one of these, Not Quite a Blizzard Headbands by Melissa Lambino. Um, this is also out of Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick uh, in the Colorway Spice Market. And um, these are out of US, or knit on US 11's 8.0 millimeter needles and um, super quick knit, knit. I think I knit this in a couple days. And it's nice and cozy, and it took only half a skein of um, the Lion brand thick and quick. So if I wanted to knit another one, I could. <laughs> um, yeah, and otherwise, um, I pretty much follow the pattern on this, so <laughs> not too much to say about it. But um, yeah, it's also starting to warm up now, so I'm not sure how much I'll be able to wear this, <laughs> but um, for next year at least. Uh, so yeah, that's my headband. 
Um, and then again, we have two finished objects that I have already gifted. <laughs> um, these were another set of baby knits. So I'll show pictures here. The first um, are a pair of Sarches booties by Sarche de Brun. Um, I knit this out of knitting color acoustic sock in the colorway Coral Reef Light. Um, the, in the past I've knit these on US 1's 2.25mm needles, um, but this time I knit them on um, a slightly larger needle, US 2.5's, <laughs> 3.0mm needles, um, and I knit the larger size, so these came out a little bit bigger than they normally would. Um, which was probably good because I think the even the larger size on the smaller needles are pretty tiny <laughs> so they are, they only fit for a little bit. Otherwise I pretty much followed um, the pattern. I didn't switch colors um, since I just used the one um, and then after I knit them I found um, some modifications that people have made to make them seamless which I don't know why I didn't think to look for those before <laughs> so I think if I would if I'm knitting these again I might try and do a seamless version so um yeah and then to match I made another barley light by tin can knits um it's out of the same yarn and um also US 2.5 needles 3.0 millimeter and then um for the ribbing and then US 4 3.5 millimeter needles for the main part of the hat and I knit the toddler size which I think is the second um, smallest size and um, yeah and it turned out really cute <laughs> so those are some two baby knits that were gifted to um, our neighbors that had just um, had a new baby girl so yeah congrats to them <laughs> So that's it for my finished objects. Um, we have a number of works in progress. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of knitting lately. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. So I've worked a little bit on the Waiting for Henry um, socks by Tabitha Gandhi. Um, these are out of Hey Sister Yarn Company Geronimo sock in the Noir colorway kit. And this um, is also on US 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, I think the pattern has instructions to knit uh, top down, but I'm just knitting it toe up. And um, that's pretty much it so far. <laughs> um, it's living in my Silver Shed sheet bag. And yeah, just a little bit of progress on this, but I'm almost to the point where I can um, do the heel, which I think I will do a Fish Lips Kiss Heel. Um, the pattern calls for a contrasting heel too, so that will work out. Another project that I'm working on um, is the Arctic Cowl by Carrie Bostic Coach. Um, this is a pattern from Making Magazine, issue number two. Um, so this is what it is in the magazine. Um, I am knitting this out of um, St. Magnus DK in the colorway Sage. This was actually some yarn that I picked up um, in London, um, I think from Loop. Um, when we went there, hmm, like six years ago? <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is actually one of the yarns that the pattern calls for. Um, it is a 50-50 Angora wool blend, and it's quite soft and fuzzy. It's got a little halo to it from the Angora. Um, these are knit out of, or on, US 5's 3.75mm needles. Um, the pattern in the magazine is, um, just written, so I converted it to a chart, um, on Stitch Fiddle, and, um, I will link to that site below, but it's a great place to, um, input your own chart, whether you're creating one from scratch or just um, basing one off of a knitting pattern that's only written. So uh, it's a, it was a lot easier to knit this pattern once I could visually see um, the chart. So yeah, that helped. <laughs> um, yeah, and otherwise, um, pretty happy with it so far. Uh, I think I'm about halfway done, a little more than halfway done. So yeah, it's coming along quite quickly. Uh, so next to my works in progress is a ghost, um, not a traditional ghost, but this is uh, a destiny ghost. Um, it is, a, how would you describe it? <laughs> it's your essentially like AI slash um, assistant slash 
something um, in one of the games that I play uh, called Destiny. And um, if you've been a long time watcher, <laughs> then I think I mentioned this way back um, when I first got the game. Um, but yeah, I am making a little, um, essentially like Amigurumi version of um, your ghost companion. Uh, that's, I mean, yeah, it's basically an AI companion. Um, and this is the second one that I've made. I don't remember if I showed the first one on the podcast. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to make a bunch of these, um, to give as gifts for, um, my friends that I play with. So, um, yeah, I figured they would be a good, like, clan gift. So, yeah, that's, um, the ghost. Uh, it is is I'm knitting this one out of um, Malabrigo. I have some leftover Malabrigo in um, the colorways Va, Pearl 10, and Pearl. Um, the greenish, dark green color is Va, and then this is Pearl 10, and the white is Pearl. Um, and yeah, um, it's quite squishy. It's a lot softer than the other one that I made, which was out of a uh, Red Heart acrylic yarn. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's a good project to use my leftovers in. So, anyway, uh, that's my little ghost. <laughs> so, a bigger new work in progress is a new sweater. So, yay! <laughs> um, I am knitting a boxy out of a Madeline Tosh Euro sock in the colorway Moonstone. This is my swatch. Um, I pretty much hit gauge. I think it's a little bit, um, I think after I blocked it, it's like half a stitch, um, larger, I guess, than, um, the, what the pattern calls for, but I think that will be okay based off of the ease in, that's built into the pattern, and then, um, hopefully when I work on the sleeves, I can try it on and see, make sure that it fits right, but, um, I think that'll be fine. Um, so I actually got this yarn as part of a sweater club like many years ago now. <laughs> um, and I haven't done anything with it yet until now. Um, the, uh, I think the Euro sock is actually a light fingering weight yarn. Um, but, uh, based off the gauge swatch that <laughs> it's actually like, um, turning out okay in gauge. Um, so that's good. Uh, I am still on the ribbing. I'm going to be doing a little bit um, longer ribbing than what the pattern calls for, just so it doesn't flip up or anything. Um, so, yeah, boxy is a, if you're not familiar, <laughs> it's a um, boxy-shaped sweater. Um, it's lightweight, uh, at least this one is. I think there's a worsted version of it. Um, so it's a good, like, kind of spring uh, slightly warmer weather wear, um, sweater, and, um, yeah, it's knit from the bottom up, so starting with the ribbing, and I think I'll do about 10 rows of ribbing, and then, um, go into mainly stockinette stitch, and I'm going to be doing, um, I'm planning to do <laughs> helical knitting again, um, so I haven't decided if I'm going to alternate just two of the skeins, or, three or all four <laughs> um, in the helical knitting, so we'll see when I get there. Um, right now I'm just doing the ribbing out of one skein because I think that will be fine. <laughs> um, and then, oh yeah, and then this is um, knit on US 4s, 3.5 millimeter needles, um, and yeah, it's living in my little bag. Um, I'll have to look up where, forget who made this, um, but it was a gift, um, and I love it, the octopus with <laughs> all of the yarn and working on their little color work scarf, um, so yeah, I'll put in the show notes, um, or the description box below where this is from, but yeah, little project bag. Uh, next project, last work in progress, oh my gosh, there's so many, um, these are the Keep Going Socks, um, this is out of, you might recognize, a Nitty and Color Acoustic Sock in the colorway Coral Reef Light, um, I had some leftovers, obviously, <laughs> from the baby knits that I did, and I really liked these colors, they're so, 
um, like Eastery and like spring and pastel. Um, so I wanted to make some socks. I should have enough if I do um, contrasting heels to finish a pair of socks. So hopefully. So this pattern um, is by Chase Clark. Um, I think it was featured in Black Squirrel, um, the Black Squirrel Yarn Shop. Um, and I think it is available on their website, blacksquirrelberkeley.com. So it's just this um, pattern with a little simple um, detail, like pearl stitch details on it. Um, it is a free pattern, so you can find it um, on Black Squirrel's website. It's just a nice simple design to give a little bit of um, interest to the pattern, um, but yeah, and also I managed to skip the <laughs> first few um, pearl stitch pattern, um, I guess, stitches <laughs> in the beginning of this. Um, I think when I was casting on, I thought it started later and I wasn't really checking the pattern um, until I realized, oh, maybe I should look at the pattern and see when the pearl stitches start. And they started pretty much at the beginning. <laughs> so, but I think it works out okay. Um, I kind of like how it looks without the design detail all the way to the toe. So I'm fine with that. <laughs> um, and then these are on US 1's 2.25 millimeter needles. Uh, these are actually my Addy Turbo Sock Rockets. Um, I haven't knit with these in a while, but I figure I should distribute my <laughs> knitting across um, my different needles. So yeah. Um, and then this is living in Chicken Boots bag. Um, the little sock project bag, and that's all of my works in progress. Oh my goodness. So that brings us to pretty things. Speaking of Easter colors, <laughs> um, I made a, kind of an impulse buy at Mustache Yarn. Um, it came in this lovely package. So I picked up um, a perfect sock striping, perfect self-striping sock. <laughs> Um, skeins in the colorway for peep's sake. Um, it is basically striped pastel rainbows with a, a contrasting brown um, and yeah it's it's so cute. <laughs> um, so yeah these will be a pair of socks eventually but um, yeah that's one new stash enhancement. And then also for pretty things I am wearing it um, this is a sweater. It says, don't stop, knit it, knit it. Um, I love it so much. Uh, it's from Nerdbird Makery. Um, I missed the first update um, when they were released, but then they restocked and I was able to snag. Um, so this is the cropped version. Uh, it's super soft. I really like it. Um, the only thing that I'm not used to is that the sleeves, like... Um, when I move my arms around, the sleeves kind of come up a little bit more, and I like to have my sleeves kind of, like, cover my hands, so that's, I don't know if that was part of the cropped fit, it just happens to have slightly shorter arms, but, um, otherwise, I mean, it's a perfect sweater, <laughs> so, yeah, um, and then, oh, and then also, um, I am wearing some cute, handmade earrings that um, one of my friends made for me so not exactly something I bought <laughs> but a gift so they are little video game controllers um, on these earrings she got a Cricut machine a while back and has been making stuff so they're very cute so next is um, fangirling um, I haven't had this segment in a while but it's just a place where I can talk about um, like podcasts that I've been listening to or people that are really cool <laughs> and um, so this kind of fits in um, a little bit but uh, it's actually gonna be about one of my friends <laughs> so I don't know if that's fair um, so one of my friends has been making um, resin dice and she just started um, I don't know like a few months back maybe I don't know what time is anymore um, so uh, but she has an Instagram account now um, it is called Erin Makes Dice and I will put a link in the show notes below or on this and stuff podcast.com um, anyway so she's been making these resin dice and they're really cute 
and um, she has been using them in her D&D campaigns. Um, I don't, not currently doing an active D&D one, but um, if I start one up again, then I would definitely want to use <laughs> some dice. So she's been introducing us to like the world of dice making um and people are so talented <laughs> and come up with like the coolest designs um so she actually made um a birthday dice gift for um for my fiance uh he's really into pokemon and so she made a pokemon themed dice so um if you've seen a pokeball before this is what it looks like. Um, yeah, it's it's very cute. Um, it's got a red top and a white bottom with a little black stripe across the middle. Um, and then the colors or the numbers are inked in yellow, um, which is perfect. <laughs> so yeah, it's really cool. And she's made a bunch of other um, fun colored dice and keeps experimenting. So it's, it'll be fun to see what else she makes. And I am definitely going to put in requests for dice for me. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that is um, Aaron Makes Dice. So moving on to local delights. Um, so we recently discovered a newish um, shop, cafe, restaurant, um, pick up, food pick up to go please. <laughs> um, it's called Magnolia Mini Mart. So they have a bunch of different, um, like prepackaged food. Uh, they carry like different, um, vendors, I guess. <laughs> they have like pastries from one vendor and like spam masubi from another and just like different, um, like prepackaged like sauces or jams and think like all kinds of different, um, things, <laughs> I guess. Um, they're really tasty though. So we tried a couple different things. Um, they had, um, hojicha jam, um, which was like a jam that you could spread on toast, basically, <laughs> um, that tastes like hojicha tea. Um, and then they had, um, different pudding cups. So there was a matcha pudding with strawberry sauce and a brown sugar milk tea pudding. Both were delicious. <laughs> um, and then uh, we got a couple of pate shoes. Um, one was filled with Earl Grey um, and lemon and then another one was um, cinnamon toast crunch flavored <laughs> and um, both of those were also really good. Um, so they were very tasty, um, and they also have a bunch of savory stuff, kind of like, um, pantry items too. Um, it's just a huge variety of things that you could pick up. Uh, it's located in West Oakland. Um, if you're in the area, you could order online for pickup or get delivery. Um, and I think they also have, um, like coffee and tea drinks too, if you want something drink. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, everything that we tried there was really good, so I'm looking forward to trying more. So yeah, that's Magnolia Mini Mart. Um, so that is all I have. I feel like I've been talking forever, although I think I've been going through things kind of quickly. Um, <laughs> so uh, social media stuff, I am Eliana Nitz on Ravelry, if that's safe for you to see all my project notes there. Um, otherwise, there will be pro project related things linked to um in the podcast notes um everywhere else i am unperfect 529 like twitter instagram um yeah so thank you for watching um thanks to anyone that left comments on youtube it's nice to know that you're enjoying um what i'm making so uh always nice to see um and yeah i hope to be back in a month i'm trying to record regularly monthly so um hopefully that will keep up especially with all the knitting that I'm doing I might have a bunch of finished finished things next time too so yeah I will see you all then thanks bye